Here's a quick tip on machining um, the inside faces of chuck drawers on a chuck which has got a bit of wear in the scroll plate um, and possibly the jaws. The normal method would be that you put a load up the back, I'd put a, a big washer or something in the back of the jaws to uh, pull up against the, uh, the jaw and the scroll plate, put some tension on it because obviously you've got to take any slop out uh, when you grind the jaws. The problem with that is though, then you put all the load up the back of the jaw, when you go to use the uh, the chuck, of course, you'll be gripping it up near the, the front of the jaw and of course it's the pulling the washer up the back to the wrong end, but then how do you drill, how do you put a load up the front of a chuck without it getting in the way of your tool post grinder? Well jaws are generally made out of hard stuff and if it's a good English chuck like this Bernard, it's going to be that hard, you're never going to... Uh, do much as far as drilling and putting pins in to put a washer there. So what I do on an old chuck like this, the easy way out, is you basically machine a slot into the face of the jaw. So you use carbide cutter, carbide tooling and you machine and when you machine it the main thing to do is get a 90 degree face on the outside of the groove you're machining in there. You uh, machine that groove the same diameter as a piece of tube that you've got which will, is just the right size to basically allow those jaws to stand proud of the, of the in, internal um, core of the chuck so you've got room to actually grind through without hitting the chuck. And then basically once you've made up this little setup, done your slot, done your groove, you just put in your piece of tubing tighten up your chuck and you're good to go. Put in your grinder and uh, do your grinding. Easy. Okay, it marks the end of the chuck a bit but it's nothing to worry about because the chuck has still got a still got a, uh, a plain face on it so you can still get right up to the very edge. You can clean it up after if you want to. And that's how you do it. Now, obviously, if a scroll's worn um, or or loose, you know, it can't be shimmed easily or whatever. If there's wear in there, the various size jobs are going to be uh, have varying degrees of wear in the scroll plate. So you're never going to get it 100%, but this will get it as good as you're going to get it. And uh, also, another little tip is when you do your grinding, make sure you put some texture pen on the faces before you grind them then you can see how you're going because you may only have to do the one the one jaw um, heavily and then I mean you don't want to be grinding off more than you have to so basically run the lathe at a very slow speed so you know 100 uh, rpm good speed and uh, put it in the reverse direction to the the, the stone um, spinning, although it's, at that speed it's not going to make a massive difference because this is doing like 30,000 RPM and <laughs> the chuck's only doing 100, so you can basically go either direction. It's not going to make a big difference at all, really. But anyway, generally you go in reverse. So yeah, put your texture pan on there. When, then when you're grinding, you can see how you're going. And once you just stop it every so often, and once you've got all the texture pan off on on all three jaws, the full length, job's done. So there you go. Hope that helps.